we are broadcasting live, well, it's live for us, pre-recorded for you, <laughs> from my mother-in-law's half of her garage converted into an office in Folsom, California, where my special guest reviewer is my beautiful wife, Nicole, who's Thank two you. years older than me, cradle rocker. Anyway, we drove all the way into <laughs> that <was laughs> the tower district. Not something <laughs> I expected. <laughs> all the way to sure. the tower district in Sacramento. We got lots of one-liners today. We went to the historic tower theater, which I had wanted to watch the new Wes Anderson movie since it came out came out on the twenty third of May. Twenty third of May. Yep. No, I, I thought it, it was twenty third of June. I got it right here in my notes. It's been out. And I just haven't had time to uh, see it. Okay. So here we are. We saw it, and now it's been out for a month. Huh. Yeah. Okay. And I was gonna see it by myself many times because I'm a huge Wes Anderson fan, but we've just now gotten around to it, and we had the child care to both go together, and so here we are, and now Thanks, we're gonna Mom, talk Dad. about it. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> Wes Anderson, I'd like to give a huge shout out to my friend Ryan Burt. And he got me into my first Wes Anderson movie back in my high school days. He came down to my parents' house in Anaheim, and I distinctly remember we went to the Hollywood Video on Tustin Street and Patella in the city of Orange. Wow, well, Hollywood Video, you're really dating yourself there. <laughs> and there we rented <laughs> Bottle Rocket because he liked Bottle that Rocket. movie, and it's Wes Anderson's first movie. And then he and I have also, he used to live in the Coachella Valley area. And I'd go out there all the way from Orange County and see Wes Anderson movie releases when they came out. He was my go-to Wes Anderson guy. Hmm. And I also want to give a shout out to my friend Vince. I had talked to him about wanting to see this movie and he wanted a shout out too. So now we're getting into the details and we'll give it our official rating on the one to five scale like we always do. Asteroid City. 2023 Wes Anderson directed he co-wrote this movie with Francis Ford Coppola's son Roman Coppola mm. and they wrote this movie during the pandemic fun factoid the Tom Hanks character was supposed to be played by Bill Murray and then he got COVID-19 and the protocols were really intense at the time so they had to bring in Hanks to shoot all of the Bill Murray scenes. And how many other Wes Anderson films feature Bill Murray? Because I know he was in um, that other one, okay, the, the Moonrise, Moonrise Kingdom. He's he in was Moonrise there. Kingdom. He's in The French Dispatch. He has a cameo in Grand Budapest Hotel, Rushmore, uh, Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, obviously. Wow, he's in like all of uh, them. He's in That's a lot. Kind of he's not. He's not in all of them. That's always kind of one of his go-to people. Okay. West, well, he's uh, in, and, he's um, in a lot of them. Owen Wilson's another regular player, which he wasn't in this movie, but like all the regular players, Jeff Goldblum, Tilda Swinton, uh, Jason Schwartzman, Adrian Brody, uh, two of the actors from the uh, Grand Budapest Hotel, whose names elude me, and Will, what was Willem Dafoe. the girl's Defoe. name who played the Midge character? Her that actress's name. I can't think of it right now. Scarlett Johansson? Yeah, she was in it. Wasn't she, she in... Is she one of the regulars, too? No. Oh. I think this well, was her was first. And this was the Tom Hanks first. So every time... The ad campaign for this was really big out here in California. It was everywhere on social media. Hmm. And I just kept thinking when I would see that. And then, like, obviously there's these filters now that you can see on Instagram and Reels and all that. This is, like, the most Wes Anderson movie of the Wes Anderson genres. It's, like, stylistically... I'm trying to separate like the movie from like how the set design was and it's like a perfect Wes Anderson movie as far as like color, cinematography, costume design, set design. I felt like to me that was five out of five but yeah very what, a lot of pastels and um what and this nice I'm colors. not I'm not wanting like to give colors. I'm not wanting to get yeah, that colors were awesome. Yeah. I'm not wanting to give spoilers, but this is a movie within a movie. So that was not really evident in any of the trailers. And I'm sure that was by design. But it kind of like went back to the French dispatch for me where like he did all these little vignettes like the last Coen Brothers movie that they did together that went straight to Netflix, where it's like 
it kind of bothered me where they would like jump between these different back and forths. So the Asteroid <laughs> City, I always just thought it was like a movie, like any of his other movies. Like just a straight timeline from but the beginning it's not. to end. It's like a documentary about a play that's called Asteroid City. So it kind of goes back and forth between the, the play, making of the movie, which the feels making of like, the play. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the, some sequences are in black and white when it's documentary style. Right. And it's a period movie set in 1955, and it's just awesome, but it bothered me. <laughs> and the whole theme was kind of a nihilistic, which you, you had to dig deep into that while we were driving home. And you felt like it didn't have a lot of positive in, influence it, in your life had, in any it, way. Well, it had some positive moments, and I can't really delve into that without giving spoilers, so yeah, I won't. won't. But um, there were some positive aspects, but... Um, the movie did ask a lot of like existential questions and I guess the answers that it gives, um, I guess it just, it's not really a movie that you walk out of feeling like positive vibes about life and death and, and, uh, that type of thing. So if you're looking for like any type of religious perspective, it was a deeper movie. If you want a more philosophical point of view you will enjoy it. And there yeah. were there was moments that I laughed out loud quite a bit in this movie. I enjoyed the humor and yeah, the there, style there of this movie. Yeah, there were some funny points, yeah. This movie cost $25 million to make, and as of June 29th, it's grossed $21.5 million, and it was the highest grossing opening for any Wes Anderson film ever. And I think oh, part, wow. that was due in part to the fact that it had such a huge ad campaign. Mm, um, yeah. It has very mixed critics' reviews. Like I said, I feel like it, it visually it was perfect, but then I just didn't really like how it was kind of a movie within a movie and it kind of jumped back and forth. That really bothered me. Yeah. And let's go over critics' ratings here, which we don't really give a damn about critics' ratings because we form our own opinions. <laughs> but let's talk about it anyway for fun. <laughs> but that's just, this is just what I've always done. By the way, hour yeah. and 45 minute runtime. Mm. I am going to go right into my review. <sighs> I, I wanted to be higher than this. He's so but conflicted. Because of, like I said, five out of five visually, but the storyline, how it kind of toggled back and forth, I wasn't a fan of that. Three out of five for Corey. Three out of five? Okay. And and what was your take on it? Well, I've got two ratings. Okay. Um, as far as the, the way it's filmed and the artistic vibes, just like five, five out of five on that. So but as far as the content, as far as the content of the movie and like, um, just the, the moral, the moral undertones, I guess. Um, I just, I'm three out of five on it too. I mean, as far as that, it's, it's an average. The story there's was not, just okay for you? Yeah. There's not a whole lot of swearing, like at all. It's very light on the swearing, so that's good. Um, there are some sensual moments, I guess. It's, as any Wes Anderson movie really would For have a grown-up film. I it's, mean, it's rated R, by the way. It's light on that. Is it rated R? Yes, okay. there's a full frontal nudity of Scarlett But I feel like Johansson. it's not that bad because, and I'm not a fan of those type of scenes at all in movies. Like, I find it unnecessary. But, um, and... And you're an, art, and you're an artist. <laughs> and, I, and I don't know if you'll agree. Okay, that, so... But, but as far as that, I was going to say, it's very, like, it's very blurred in that. So I feel like it's not actually as bad as it could have been. This was um, a very artistic movie, yeah. and I think it was kind of paying homage to um, Tennessee Williams. There, the, there's a character in there played by uh, Edward Norton, uh, another Wes Anderson regular, and he kind of, I think he's kind of supposed to be like a Tennessee Williams playwright kind of a guy. Okay. So critics kind of agree with us. <laughs> this movie has a Rotten Tomatoes score of 74%, no, IMDb 7 out of 10. And Google users, average Joes that put their thoughts onto Google, 70%. So I think that yeah. we're both, I think that people are kind of feeling it. I liked it better than The French Dispatch, but it's not my favorite Wes Anderson movie. It has a very nihilistic vibe, like without giving away too much. It just kind of, it kind of leaves you feeling like... Well, what's the what's the point and purpose? I of, think, but of some people might really all, appreciate that you know? because it kind of gets you to think, and it's not telling you what to think. It's just kind of proposing like. 
there's some dark things that happen in the movie and it's kind of like yeah proposing these ideas with like with like these teenage kids and like even the adults in the movie they're like what's it all about yeah. Uh, and like even in the trailers you see like aliens come down and it's just kind of like that you kind of didn't like that and it then, was very hokey yeah and is that giving it away if i if i talk about that it's like most of it looked very realistic but then granted you have to understand that it's a play within a movie so some of it might not be realistic because they are showing that it's a play but but when it came okay so you said the alien is in is in, the in the previews, in the previews okay, they talk I didn't, about it. I didn't see any previews I went in I went in fresh as you like she to knew say. nothing about it and I <laughs> and dragged nothing. her along so when I see the alien I'm just like thinking it, it's not done it's not done realistically but, so you lost me you but, lost me at the alien but then you have to appreciate his other movies because Wes Anderson okay. really gets into claymation like Isle of Dogs that you oh, gave me yeah. and what's the no, other I, one with I the, like that the fantastic Mr. Fox uh, yeah I like it that kind of too. pulls from his other styles and he did that and you didn't see french dispatch either he kind of did some oh, other I didn't see that. Uh, he's okay. kind of pulling yeah, in other the... stylistic elements into like okay so when he pulls in the claymation i don't know the claymation <laughs> it's, it's, it's just it it's might indicative not be of what he's done in a lot of his other movies okay well just <laughs> and now he's kind of because before like if you think of a movie like moonrise kingdom it's just like a movie about a situation and now he's pulling yeah, in a lot of different scenarios like he did with the french dispatch and it just kind of feels choppy and all over the place and that really bothered us yeah i think i love the moonrise so, kingdom so yeah. and that one didn't have the i like claymation but it's just that you felt like it had its place see yeah he started doing a lot of these different experimental things and it felt very odd yeah i so. mean it 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 was well, and you said this was made during 2020, so... Oh, yeah, so the, this okay, was a so, pandemic movie, too. Yeah, so don't... don't. Yeah, without giving any anything away, when you see the movie, it'll make sense oh, why... Oh, he said in, in the research that I did that that influenced him to write that. Okay, yeah, so so, so I don't want to give it away for the viewer, but just when you... After you see the movie, then you'll, you'll see know the why, the or you know... And you'll look for it, and you'll find right. it. Right, you'll see. Oh, okay. Makes sense that this happened in a movie that was a 2020 movie. So that's our review. We appreciate people you are for trying coming to along come in for the ride. They're I'm knocking scared. on the door, and we are frightened. At my in-laws' house in Folsom, California. <laughs> Until next time, we'll see you then. Bye.